right, before we go any further, let me just say this. I've known this guy for a number of years, and we are living in a frightening and pivotal moment in American history. And the status quo, the status quo and same old, same old, just ain't good enough anymore. We need people to have the guts to take on the establishment, to fight for working people, and this guy will do that. So I'm going to do everything I can uh, to work with Ben to see that he's elected by the next governor of Maryland. Thank you, Bernie. It's good to be here with you. And, you know, in 2016, when we were crisscrossing the country, one of the things we were talking about was the need to move to Medicare for All. In these times of Donald Trump, that means our states have to be prepared to take the lead. Bernie sat next to Elijah Cummings for years in the U.S. Right. Congress. And yesterday, Congressman Cummings, a great line of Baltimore, came out with his own report, saying that because Jeff Sessions refuses to, to protect all of Obamacare, because he refuses to defend key provisions of Obamacare, tens of thousands of people in our state will lose coverage because they have pre-existing conditions. Tens of thousands of people with serious pre-existing conditions will be denied coverage. Women will, in many instances, will be charged more for their health care coverage. This is what we're dealing with out of Washington. And our governor will not start, stand up to Donald Trump or the pharmaceutical companies or Jeff Sessions, and especially not when it comes to, to defending our health care. And that's why I'm championing Medicare for all for Maryland. Bernie, you know, you've said many times that if we listen to the people, they're very clear about the pain that they're feeling on these health issues. The chairman of my campaign is a graduate of the Wharton School of Business and Morgan State University. He's 80 years old. His last job, 10 10 per hour washing dishes. Why? Because he can't afford his wife's pharmaceutical bill. All right, look, we got two things here. Uh, we have the Trump administration uh, allowing us to move back to the bad old days. And those bad old days, as Ben was just talking about, is you have heart disease, you have cancer, you have diabetes. Who's going to give you insurance? They can't make money off you. Right. Right? So you're not going to be able to afford it, or they're going to say, sorry, Ben, we're not going to cover the possibility that you may have a recurrence of cancer. How absurd it is to once again put people back in that position. What, how absurd it is to discriminate against women you know, because they are women. So that's one thing that we got to deal with. But as Ben also indicated, the United States of America today, we're the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a right. We pay by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. We got 30 million people without any health insurance. Many of you are underinsured with high deductibles and high copayments. And yet at the end of all of that, as Ben has talked about time and time again, we are spending twice as much per person on health care for not covering everybody and for having health care outcomes which are worse than many other countries. Now, how stupid is that? How absurd is that? And as Ben just said, more and more people are catching on that health care must be a right, that we can do it far more cost effectively than this current dysfunctional system. And that's why we, last poll that I saw, that was a Reuters poll, I don't know, a month ago or so. 70% of the American people now support Medicare for all. So do not believe those people who tell us the American people don't want it, we can't do it, Canada can do it, Europe can do it, every other country on earth can do it. Somehow America can't do it, Mar Maryland can't do it. I don't believe that. We can absolutely do it. And for, and for that matter, don't believe the nasty ads that the GOP has been running. Who funds them? The pharmaceutical companies. What's the difference between my campaign and the other guy's campaign? He takes money from the pharmaceutical companies. I'm willing to take on the pharmaceutical companies. And that's what the people of Maryland need. We need to, to get a better deal from all of these companies. We've said even as we get ready to pass Medicare for All, we will make it possible to re-import pharmaceuticals from Canada so we can get a better deal. It's urgent. I sat down with a leader uh, in Prince George's today. He said, Ben, to put it plainly, this overcharging by pharmaceutical companies, this fact that we have to pay so much for health care, it's burning up multi-generational wealth. It's impoverishing senior citizens right when they were about to give their home, uh, their nest egg, you know, leave it in a will to their family, and it's literally getting burned up. Ben, I mean, this is so crazy. I mean, it's almost unbelievable. It happens to be true. One out of five Americans 
who get a prescription from their doctor are unable to fill that prescription. So you go to the doctor because you're sick, doctor writes out a prescription, and you can't fill it. What's going to happen? You end up sicker. You end up in the emergency room, maybe the hospital, maybe you die. How crazy is that? So we have a pharmaceutical industry. Don't get me going on that, please. <laughs> because we got a pharmaceutical industry who are ripping off the American people in a, the most shameful way imaginable, charging us two, three, five times more for the same medicine as they charge in other countries. So we need a governor who is not going to take money from the pharmaceutical industry, but is going to take on the pharmaceutical industry. And here's your guy. We can do this. Now, we've got 34 days left, and the way we do this is we go back and win the way we did in 2010 in Maryland. We turn out more than a million voters. The Republicans in Maryland only win when we don't show up. This year, we've got to show up. We have an opportunity to finally fix the health care system. That's why the nurses have endorsed me. We have an opportunity to finally fully fund our schools, keep the broken promise on the casino money. That's why the teachers have endorsed my campaign all across the state. And, and you know, Bernie, when we started this off, the GOP decided to attack me by making this short video of me saying over and over again, Bernie and I agree on a lot. And let me say it again tonight. Bernie and I agree on a lot. <laughs> one of the things Wait, am I the boogeyman here now? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize that. No, they're doing their best to, okay. to uh, make me that now. But <laughs> well, here's the point. It's not just Bernie and it's not just Ben. This is what the American people want. Absolutely. They want a decent minimum wage, a livable minimum wage. They want health care for all. They want good public schools. They don't want billionaires to be buying elections. So you keep up the good work and you're going to win this thing. Hey, Bernie, you know, you'll be proud to hear this. Not only do we not take any money from corporate PACs or corporations or big businesses, the average donation to Friends of Ben Jealous last quarter wasn't quite 27 bucks, but it was $42. That's good. So let's keep driving it down. If, it. if you can give $5, please do. All right, last point that I want to make. Ben already made it. Republicans win when people don't vote and when big money puts ads all over the TV. That's how they win. We can beat them when ordinary people begin to stand up and fight back. November 6th, it is enormously important for Maryland and frankly for the country that Ben get elected. So please get your friends, wake your friends up, get them involved, and let's come out and vote and have a record-breaking voter turnout. If you want to send a message to Donald Trump, what better way to do it than to send the former national president of the NAACP and a good friend of Bernie Sanders to be your next governor?